I think in general, uh, when we hear the word authority, it um, can often uh, rouse within us a spirit of rebellion. Uh, generally, I suppose for most of us, we don't like being told what to do. So when we hear authority, we think people abusing authority, we think dominion, we think people o oppressing others. Uh, and yet in many experiences in our life, we actually see authority lived out in a good way and we see the need for good authority. Like if you're a teacher, you want a principal who can deal with the Department of Education and fight for the extension for the school and for fair wages and whatever else uh, you need, you know, GDPR and safeguarding. You want, you want someone who deals with all the policies and procedures of the school. You want someone who has the authority to do that job well so that you can do your job well. So you don't mind your principal having more authority than you because you need someone to do that work, okay? Or like we want our police force to have a certain amount of authority if they're to tip your average drug dealer on the back and say, look, would you mind not selling drugs? Would that be okay? If that makes you comfortable, would you stop selling drugs? Um, that's not really going to work. You know, we need a police force that has some sort of authority. I will arrest you if you deal drugs to our dear children in this neighborhood. You know, so we see how authority can be used for good, it should be used for good, and overall, and there's nothing, in, 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 there's nothing wrong with authority as long as it's used well. There's no, the, the problem isn't do, is authority wrong? No, it depends on how authority is used, just like any power, power any, a hammer can be used to, to build a treehouse or uh, it can be used to, to hurt someone. There's nothing wrong with the hammer though, depends on how it's used. Authority uh, it can be a very good thing if, if used well, if used correctly if used with, with good ethics, with good morals, and of course, fundamentally, ultimately, if used for the building up of God's kingdom. So, uh, also within the church, authority isn't, isn't a bad thing, just depends on how it's used. Uh, so we need, we need authority. I mean, we see here Jesus, uh, when he preaches, he preaches with authority. And it's made a deep impression on the listeners, right? Because he, he says it made a deep impression on them because unlike the scribes, he thought with authority. So that means the scribes then didn't teach with authority. So how did they teach? What's kind of the opposite to teaching with authority? I think something, it's something that, that might be quite present today as well. Uh, preaching for popularity or teaching for popularity is very, very easy. Um, it's kind of populist approach where you tell people what they want. Uh, that's, that's very easy and it'll get you a certain amount of applause and notoriety and interviews on local radio. Um, but it's, it doesn't have any authority behind it, right? I mean, if you just tell people what they want to hear all the time, it, it'll, it might help the collection. Uh, it'll definitely help your popularity. But one will be able to hear it. There's no real authority behind it. Um, there's no... And why is, and we'll, we'll, we'll cut immediately to the why, 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 is, why, why that is. Why is it that there's no authority behind simply telling people what they want to hear? <clears throat> Years ago, there was a really good series called Band of Brothers. Uh, it was, I think there were 10 episodes in it, or something like that. Uh, I was a big fan at the time. And there was this one soldier in it called Major Winters, right? And uh, he was a, a commander there. And for the different episodes of Band of Brothers, they, they followed a different soldier, so sometimes it was just the, the ordinary lieutenant, a private, uh, sometimes they, they follow the commanders, so they, they follow different people to see what the, what the war was, the second, it's, shot, it's the Second World War. Uh, so it, it showed what the experience of the war were like from different perspectives. <clears throat> but in one or two of the episodes, they follow Major Winters. So he has a position of authority. He has responsibility, he has men under his charge, and based on his decisions, people are going to live or die. Okay, so it's it's fairly, it's fairly important that you make the right decisions, even in the thick of war when, when things can be quite chaotic. And uh, there was there's one scene where there are some Germans in a bunker, uh, which they have, to, they have to take out. So um, he lines them all up in their trench, and he tells each one you know, who they have to take out, where to go, what the, what the formation is going to be, how the whole thing is going to work. All right? And he says, on my signal, go. <clears throat> so they're all waiting in the trenches, and you know, the way it's shot is just very, very good. <laughs> they're all waiting for the sign, and then, first out of the trenches, Major Winters leading the charge, 
and then they all row in behind him. But it just says, it, it, one of the soldiers just says, that is the kind of man that I will follow. That is the kind of man I will die beside. Right? That's leading with authority. That's the kind of authority seat that Jesus has. Because if you want to lead, be ready to bleed. Shouting commands at, at people, that's easy. Anyone can do that. Any schoolyard bully can do that. Any Egypt can do that. That's not hard. But if you want real authority in your preaching, if you want real authority, be ready to bleed. If you want to really lead, be ready to bleed. In, in Italian, they say, <clears throat> you can't preach water and drink wine. You can't, preach, you can't be telling people, oh, you, you have to fast more. You have to fast more while you're chucking into uh, yet another Big Mac. You can, like, it's just, you know, it doesn't work. If you want to, to lead, you have to lead from the front. And if you want to lead, you have to bleed because people will not see uh, in the position of, of, of leadership the burden that it can be for the leader. All the hidden things, all of the, the, the decisions that go on behind the scenes, all of the other issues that you're aware of that <clears throat> people that you're in charge of may not, be, may not know. Uh, so it's not about glory. It's not about glory. And this is what makes Jesus different. His authority... <clears throat> isn't an authority that comes from just shouting commands. As I say, that's easy. Anyone can do that. His authority comes from the fact that he will bleed. He will ultimately bleed out and die. This is where his authority comes from. Another word for that is that his authority comes from his love. The authority that Jesus has comes from the fact that people know that he loves them. And I love you so much, I will actually tell you what might be unpopular. I love you so much, I will tell you what you mightn't actually want to hear, but what is true, because I care about you. So what Jesus then, when he's talking to the people, he may not have told them, you're all wonderful, you're all fantastic, you're all going to heaven. As we read in yesterday's gospel, I believe. <clears throat> repent. Repent and believe in the good news. Repent. Change your lives. He wasn't telling them, you're all fantastic, you're all wonderful. He's saying, change. And no one likes to be told that they should change. But he, he says it in such a way that they know he cares. They know he loves. His authority is an authority rooted in love. And ultimately rooted in the fact that he's willing to sacrifice himself for them. Ultimately rooted in the fact that he will die on the cross for them. And as those soldiers said when they saw Major Winters <clears throat> run out of those trenches into danger... That's the kind of man I will bleed beside. That's the kind of man I will die beside. When we see the Lord leading the charge on the cross, this should be so inspirational for us. This is the kind of leader I will bleed beside. This is the kind of God I will die for. So we ask the good Lord today to renew our faith. Renew our faith that, that our faith, that, that, that this tradition, this, 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 this treasury that has been passed down to us. Now, this is worth dying for. This isn't an optional extra among many options. This is the truth. This is what, how God has revealed himself. This is what God asks of us. This is what God entrusts to us to witness to others so that we may get to heaven. So we ask that, that we will always have the faith, the, the deep-seated conviction that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.